Here we are at the Daytona Air National Speedway down Daytona Beach, Florida for the running of the Samsung 250, the night race at Daytona. It's been a wild one in the past. Tonight should be no different. Let's take a look at our 42 car field. On the pole at the 22 of Tyron Lyman, two is outside the 41 of Justin Mito. In third you have JT Hanley, fourth is TJ Hanley, and we're at the top five. You got Justin Heath, your Daytona winner from earlier this season. In sixth you have Riley Spraley Tube, seventh is Max Anderson, eighth is Jeff Wright, ninth is Mason Hayward, and running out the top ten you got Joe Jefferson. The rest of the field goes Marcus Sachi, and then got Jake West, who is outside. Then you got Bryson Collins and Derek, Derek Hamill, excuse me. Then you got Tim Gary and Code Luigi, along with Tim Randolph and Kyle Hunter, Jay Jefferson and Jim Gamut. Then you got Trey Rainey and Carter Friesen, Isaac Nichols and Jason Cimino Jr., then Robert Hernandez and Patrick Smith, Michael Cantone, Evan Hunter, John Gambit, and Levi Schoen. These are your points that are coming into this race, starting towards the back of the pack. Then you got Alex Stewart and Jason Larker, Jonathan Buford and Colton Yo, Joe Sandrowicz and Eli Bright, who won this race last season. In the number 88 car, speaking of the 88 car, Julius Anderson then two is inside the 88 of Jake Richardson. Remember that team won this race last season. They're in like a three for five streak of winning races. And you got Luke Rainey and Steve Larkin running right off the field. You got Alexander on the 36 and Jay Gambit in the 27th. They were all 41st and 42nd respectively. So let's now go down track side for the command. Forty two cars fire up and roll off here at Daytona Beach, Florida. And we talk about wild races. This race last season had everything you could ask for in it. Uh, we had a quick caution with a small wreck towards the back of the field. Brought out the caution. We had a restart with around eight laps to go. Coming to about five to go, four to go. Uh, the 14 car, which was then driven by Riley Spirley Tube, got completely sideways off turn. Who was probably going to go around. He somehow saved it. He was perpendicular to the wall. He was at a 90 degree angle to the outside wall. Somehow was able to save it. Probably the best I've ever seen. And they come to the checkered flag on the last lap. Eli Bright leading two cars to his inside. They get together, they hit, they hit Eli. He saves it, but the rest of the field wrecks behind him. Bright goes on to victory. Pace car in 15 laps of Daytona. We are green flag racing at the World Center of Racing. Didn't take them long to get three wide and stacking up. JT Hanley clears for the race lead. They're three wide behind him. Max Anderson went all the way to the bottom lane. Put Justin Heath in the middle lane. And now they will come off of turn number four, who leads lap number one here at Daytona. JT Hanley trying to hold off Max Anderson as they come off of turn number four to the strike they will come. JT Hanley leads lap one. Max Anderson behind him on his bumper. And here comes Marcus Sacha already up into the top five. Just how Daytona is. You could go from... 15th to 1st in one lap. It's insane how this racing is. Here comes Derek Hamill, 3 wise. Max Harrison looks for the race lead. And it'll be crazy for a little bit. If we get a, an early caution, it'll kind of die down, but the, the uh, intensity will definitely ramp up towards the end of the race as well. That's if we end the race under green. We've ended it under caution in the past. Hanley trying to clear Hamill. They're going to might go 3 wide back there. Hamill with a great push from Kodoiju. Luigi makes it 3 wide to the bottom lane now. 30 car out of run. He took it. Now they're stacked up three by three behind your race leader, Max Anderson. How about Jay Jefferson already worked his way up? He's in the, he's in third on the bottom lane. Cold Luigi moves up. He's going to fall back. It's Jay Jefferson with a run. He has Kyle Hunter pushing him. Carter Friesen is there in the uh, 54 as well. Here comes Hunter now. And this is what Max Anderson wants to see. He wants to see them start battling and shuffling back here because then he'll be able to clear them. Yeah. If they keep kind of shuffling like this where... One gets clear and then they move up and then the other moves down. It will definitely allow Anderson to keep the lead for longer than most people, but I believe Hunter might have a run right here in turn, turn three. If he can stay clear, which it looks like he's gonna. So there's three wide behind here. Isaac Nichols already up into the top three. So we haven't even completed three laps yet, and I already see the 88 up inside the top 20. Remember the 88 started about, what, what was that, 37th? About 37th, 35th? Now he's in the top 20 already? And we've just completed our third lap of the race. Just shows how crazy it is. 
Front two are content just holding holding on. Staying single file. If they keep it like this single file, they could definitely pull away with these guys battling behind as here comes another hunter, Evan Hunter. He's gonna get to third. John Gamut pushing him. Is that what Kyle's waiting for? Is he waiting for Evan to get up there? Could be. John Gamut's gonna move up to the middle. That allows Evan Hunter to get a big run. He's gonna get clear. Alex Stewart now coming to the bottom lane. And look at the 88's already in the top 10. We talked about it. He started way back in the pack. About 35th, 37th. And now here he's in the top 10. Doesn't take long. It's only taken about four laps for him to get from the back of the pack to the front. Evan Hunter looks low on Kyle Hunter. So obviously Kyle wasn't waiting for Evan. If he knew Evan was going to make the move, he would have made it on Max Anderson first. And Evan Hunter has his mirror full of Alex Stewart. He looked to the bottom lane. Stewart couldn't get it done right there. He's going to stay in line with the 11 car. Now the dude... Does the 11, the 4, the 39 get a run off of turn number 2 down the back stretch to try and get to that 50 car? Alex Stewart's going to look low, trying to block Jake Richardson. Here comes Michael Cantor underneath the 88. Hunter, can he get down? Yes, he can. Three wide for fourth. They are stacked up three by three behind the front three. Come to 10 to go. Wow, cars get really loose off turn number four here, especially during the nighttime. During the daytime, it's not as prevalent, but at night, you can definitely get very, very loose, uh, down low especially. Alex Stewart, an aggressive move out to the bottom lane, trying to get by Evan Hunter. As they hit turn one, he's going to be able to get to the inside. Here comes Levi Schoen's your points leader, up inside the top five. He's won a race this season, so he's in the chase, and being the points leader, carry a lot of momentum. Levi's going to move up right there. He might give the bomb to Jonathan Buford. Yeah, Levi all the way up to the top. Maybe he decided he made the move too early. He's going to move back and try and make the move later. Problem is, if you go back there and they wreck, you know, you don't want to be back there when they wreck. You want to be up towards the front. Max Anderson doing just that. We've seen this with a lot of restrictor plate races in the past, especially in the Target series. A car can get up, up front and dominate the race, lead the most laps. Then they kind of fall back with midway, but then they show up at the end. They just cannot get it done. We saw that last season in this race with the 19 car. Uh, I, uh, he was leading. He got passed late on a restart, and then he got back up to the front. Oh, right there, Evan Hunter scared Eli Bright a little bit right there. I believe that's Eli. It might be Jeff. Two tied cars in this Field. They, they're right next to each other, I believe. Jonathan Buford looking for the second position. He has Alexander Robheim. TJ Hanley has found his way to the bottom lane and up inside the top 10. Buford's going to clear for that second position. Can Alex Stewart get down line in front of Alexander Rose? The question. Nope. Rose going to take that spot. And there's just no help for second place. You know, second place gets out there, but he just doesn't have the help from third on back to try and push him past the race leader. And that's exactly what Max Anderson wants to see. He wants to see that car, you know, out front. He wants to see them battling behind so that he can just get, get down to the corners, to the bottom lane, and then stay high on the stretch. Whoa, Alexander Rowe blocking TJ Hanley. And Hanley's going to make the move all the way to the double yellow line. It's not going to work for him, I don't believe. Jonathan Buford would definitely clear, but I believe he's going to get Alexander Rowe right here. So Hanley's going to get up to the third position in turn three and four. Still stacked up three by three, but they're keeping it kind of orderly there. and Not really in a position to wreck quite yet. Of course, drivers hoping that's not going to happen. They're hoping that it can go green all the way, but it's almost inevitable when you see the pack behind. But if they can do it, that'll be very impressive, and that's why they are driving in the Target Series. They're some of the best drivers. Hanley with a big run onto Max Anderson. He almost got him right there. Yeah, he's on the back bumper of the 50. That's probably the closest anyone's been to that 50 car in quite some time. If he makes the move, he can definitely get by. Here comes Hanley for the race lead. Down the back straightaway, the 44 looking on the 50. They'll hit turn three. Can he stay beside him? Is the question he does. Side by side for the race, and this is going to bring the whole pack with Hanley. Come to six laps to go. Getting dicey off of turn number four. Jonathan Buford makes a move to the bottom with a 44. To the stripe, six to go at Daytona. Here comes the 40, I believe that is Jason Smeo Jr. all the way to the bottom lane. He has a run. He had to let off, though. He got a little, I believe that might have been tight or loose. Huh? Couldn't tell what happened there with the 40, but he had to let off 
dramatically, and that allowed Jonathan Buford to keep the race lead. Hanley is going to keep second. He's actually going to be in line. Whoa, look at the block by Hanley on Max Harrison. He had to run off the top of one and two. Anderson tried to make the move. Hanley said, nope, I'm making it first. And Hanley gets all the way to the bottom lane. He's back to the race lead here at Daytona, coming to five to go. If the caution comes out, we will have a late restart. If it doesn't, the race is most likely over. Robert Hernandez peaks low. That's for a second. To the stripe, they come five to go. Hanley's out front. Robert Hernandez behind him in second. Oh, Sean's around. Your points, they are spinning in the tri-oval. No caution yet. No caution. They're going to let them race. Levi Schoen spun around in the tri-oval. That is your points leader. Not what he wanted to see. Especially since there's no yellow. Here comes Code Luigi. Three wide to the bottom lane. And how funny is that? That the 30 and 19 are still lined up with the 30 in front and the 19 in back. That's exactly how they were when they got in front of the pack the last time. Derek Hamill's going to make a move underneath Code. That's for second. They're trying to run down Hanley, who got a huge lead in three and four, and the draft is definitely going to bring them together. Now just four to go. Teammates are going to be one, two. See, they pass by the smoke from where Levi Schoen spun. Here comes Carr, freezing to the bomb lane. Getting a little antsy in the pack. Your pole sitter coming up. The 22 retire lineman's there. Carr, freezing's going to have a run right here. Can he... Can he use it? Get by the 44 is the question. It looks like it stalls out just a little bit. He has no help behind him. Tim Rounds going to make it three wide. Coming to three to go. Ran off with a huge push into turn three. Yeah, he has Tyre Lyman all over his back bumper. You know, Lyman has a fast car. He got the pole. Randolph, is he going to make the move? He does. Here he comes to the bottom lane. Coming to three to go. Randolph, side by side with Hanley, who leads this lap. Hanley now is the push from Lyman up top. Here comes Isaac Nichols to the bomb. Joe Jefferson is also there. Three to go at Daytona. And then we're saying that this kind of a race to try and get people into the chase. A race where people who don't have a win yet circle this race on their calendar saying, hey, I can win here. How about Jeff Bright up inside the top 10? He needs this win to get into the top 30 in points. Down the backstretch to two to go this time. Randolph's out front blocking all three lanes. Jeff Wright, he's won at the restricted plates before. Speaking of winning at the restricted plates, Justin Heath has come to the front. Jake West looking underneath the five car. He's going to get there with two laps of racing to go. Do they form a run to get by the 08? Slicing and dicing in the pack. West with the run. He's going to get below the 08. West onto the apron. Possible problem on the 15 car. The outside lane's going to be the place to be. Jeff Bright with the runoff of turn number two. Here comes Joe Jefferson. Five cars break away. Possibly six if Tyron Lyman can get up there. Can Jeff Bright make a move? Can Joe Jeff? Here comes Jeff Bright. He's going to get down front. Joe Jefferson coming to the white flag. Five, six cars have a shot. Jeff Bright clears, looking for his second win of the season. Joe Jefferson won the Daytona 500 in the Gary Cup Series. You know he knows how to win here. TJ Hanley looking for his second win of the season. To the stripe they come. White flag one more time around Daytona. Who makes it back with the race lead? Does Jeff Bright have enough of a lead to hold it? Does TJ Hanley have the help? Does Isaac Nichols, Tyra Lyman, Tim Randolph, Joe Jefferson have anything for that five car? Hanley with the push from Isaac Nichols. Down the back stretch they come. TJ won this race in season number one of the Target Series in that same 44 car. He has a run to Jeff Bryce. They enter turn three. Does Jeff have too big a lead? Into turn three for the final time. Jeff Bryce trying to hold off TJ Hanley as they come off of turn number four. Does Hanley have a peak? He has a run. Does it going to... Get him to the race seat, to the stripe, they come, it's Jeff Bright Hanley, Jeff Bright gets the victory at Daytona, and a photo finish with TJ Hanley, and Jeff Bright gets a big break with the 15 car, kind of getting slowed down to the apron, and Jeff Bright's second win of the season, that could propel him up into the chase, probably going to propel him up into the top 30 in points, wow, let's look at that finish, see how close it really was, it was about half a car length, Jeff Bright Beats TJ Hanley to the stripe.
just a little bit over half a car length, I would say. And he gets the victory here at Daytona. Before we check the Fisher results, let's see what happened to Levi Shones, how he got spun in the trioval. So here they are racing into the trioval. Levi Shones starts to the back of the pack. The 33 is Steve Larker to his inside. So let's see what happens here. Shones going through the trioval. He's trying to make a move underneath the 23, I think, and that's going to make it four wide. There's just not enough room for four wide at this track. And Shones and Larker make contact. Shones goes around. Larker, luckily able to keep that car under control, not hit the inside wall. Shones able to keep it below the racing surface, and that is why the caution was never called. He was out of the way and towards the back of the field. If that happened, say, in fifth place, the caution definitely would have been called. So let's look at that in real time. Luckily, no contact was made with either car. Yeah, that's a racing incident right there. No one's at fault, really. You could say Larker could have backed up, but it's five to go. Uh, you have to go for everything you can get. So Jeff Bright wins the race here at Daytona. Let's check the finishing results. Here are the finishing results from the Samsung 250 at Daytona. We're building up how the big one could possibly happen. There were actually no crashes, no caution flags. Four lead changes among five different drivers. So this was a very dependent heavy, or a dominant depending heavy race. As Jeff Bright brings him with the victory, he got a big, big break. Once the 15 kind of got loose down into the apron on the inside lane, Bright was able to go around on the high side, got to the race and held off. TJ Hanley ends up second, led four laps. Hanley with a great car once again at Daytona, just falls up short. Once again, another second place here. Tyre Lemon in your pole setter ends up third, so great run for him. Isaac Nichols in fourth, and Tim Randolph fifth. Then you got Joe Jefferson in sixth. Those were the six cars that have a shot because of Jake West kind of getting on the apron and slowed up everyone on back. Seventh was Justin Eath, Dayton Daytona winner from earlier this season. He's actually a great job uh, for him to get first and seventh at Daytona. Eighth, Jake West. Trey Rainey, a solid ninth, exactly what he needed. And Colton Neal rounds out the top ten. So there's your top 20. See, no, no one really led laps outside of the top 10. And then we actually go down a little bit farther and see the dominant car of the day, Max Anderson. Up there, he's leading laps back and forth, blocking traffic. He ends up 28th. He led seven of the 15 laps, so obviously the dominant car. We talked about Driver uh, winning this race last season. Eli Brighton's up 39th, not what he wanted. He just got stuck back in the pack and couldn't make it forward. Jeff Smeal started outside the front row. He ends up 37th. And then Levi Schoen's your, your uh, points leader. Takes a spin in the trial, he ends up a last in 42nd, not what he needed here at Daytona. Let's now take a look at the point standings. So after 17 races about midway through the season, in fact over midway, here are the point standings. Justin Neath has taken over the points lead by 12 points over Alex Stewart, who is now second. Third is Derek Hamill, he's only 13 back. Patrick Smith is fourth, only 22 back. And fifth is Levi Schoen, so he falls from first to fifth. He has that win, though. He's now 35 back. In 6th, you have Evan Hunter, 7th, Max Anderson, 8th, JT Hanley, Luke Rainey, and 9th, and TJ Hanley rounds out the top 10. So there's your top 20. See right now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 winners in the top 20 in points. Marcus Sacchi, the last of them. In 14th, he has 2 wins, however. And now we look down 21st to 4th. Bracing Collins with 2 wins also there. And then you got Jonathan Buford, Jeff Bright, and Steve Lark are also in the top 30. And they also have wins. Now how this is going to work. We have, what is that, 10, 11, 12, 13 winners. So the guys with two wins automatically get in. So Jeff Bright, Bryson Collins, and Marcus Sachi, as long as they hang above 30th in points, they will get in. So that's three drivers. Then you got fourth, Justin Heath, fifth, Alex Stewart, sixth is Levi Shones, seventh, Evan Hunter, eighth, Max Anderson, ninth, JT Hanley, tenth, TJ Hanley, eleventh, Tyre Lyman, and then twelfth and final spot right now goes to Jonathan Buford, but there's still a lot of racing left, and a lot more winners could definitely be decided. So the next race will be the Lowe's 250 at Michigan. It's been wild in the past. See you guys then.